Welcome back to the TLC Perfect Pond channel. I'm currently standing in the bottom of an eight acre pond that we're doing a complete restoration project on. So we're draining it now. I'll show you a little bit more about that in a minute. Draining it, we're gonna dig it out some. We're gonna wait till it fills back up with water. We're gonna stock this thing and show you guys the whole process of how we create a trophy bass fishery a really good sunfish population and just make an awesome pond here starting from scratch so although it looks dry it's kind of muddy out here i'll try to walk around and show you as much of it as we can but there's a little bit of water left in it there that we're draining out and so like i said this is eight acres and this pond before it was drained before this kind of restoration project was started they sampled this pond, did an electrofishing sample, and there wasn't a whole lot of fish in here. It just wasn't a good performing pond. And the vegetation was a constant battle in here. And that has a lot to do with how shallow those banks are, how shallow that slope is. So if you've got a really shallow slope or bank on a pond, it just invites lily pads in there. Almost all the ponds we see with those kind of banks you're gonna have some problems with lily pads. Now we can spray those and take care of them, but it's usually an ongoing battle. So one of the things we're gonna do here, once this thing's completely drained, dried up enough to get some equipment in here, is we're gonna dig out these sides. We're gonna make these banks a lot steeper, and that should help solve this lily pad problem and make it a lot more manageable. It's kinda of hard to see and I can't get way over there, but on that end of the pond, where it's really, really shallow, it's just covered in pads. So at least four of the eight acres of this pond wasn't even fishable, wasn't even accessible by boat or anything. And so the shallow nature of it, like I said, creates a lot of vegetation issues and digging it out should make this a much more productive pond. And to give you an example of what we're going for, you see how steep that bank is right there? So that's kind of what we want to do around the whole pond. So we want to take this shallow bank right here, steepen it up. We shouldn't have near as many pad or vegetation issues. Once we get it looking more like that, we may even steepen up that side as well. So to get this pond drained, they dug a little canal here. Feeds down this way. And we have the tractor here. Pump on it, pump the water out of here through that blue pipe up there. Then the water's emptying out right there in kind of a low spot, which you feed down to a creek. We put these screens right here in the canal to stop the fish. And once the water gets low enough here in a minute, the guys are gonna come in here and harvest the fish so they don't run through the pipe there and uh, get lost or die. We can actually save, harvest the fish here, eat those, so that's what those screens are for. Besides making the banks deeper, another reason we want to dig out this pond a little bit, you can see there it's got a good bit of sandy bottom on it. So they're going to try to scrape out this sand here, get to more of a hard bottom on this pond here as they're digging it out. Imagine we'll end up taking a good bit of dirt out of here before it's all over. You can see some of those fish jumping out there as they're getting pushed to that shallower water, getting pushed down into our little canal we've got there. Looks like there's some small bass in there. Don't see anything real big. Maybe we'll see some sunfish. That guy right there is trying to swim upstream. Fighting a losing battle, buddy. So our guys are in the canal here with the nets now. Gonna dip out these fish as they come in here as they get kind of hemmed up and blocked by the screen. Yeah. That's how big the roots are? Yeah. Hold that up. 
That's why they're so hard to get rid of. So we're kind of stomping around in the water here a little bit and muddying up the water and what that will do is that will oxygen start the fish and then they'll start kind of flipping up and it'll be a lot easier to harvest and find. There's a big one right there. That's typical too. Wow. Big bass. There he goes right there. Oh, coming your way, bro. There he is. There's a nice one right there. Got a monster. That's the biggest one right there. That's a big fish. Oh, nice catch. That's skinny. The sunfish are all skinny. Nothing to the forest. There we go, they're getting hemmed up right there now. Bass there is trying to figure out where to go. You can see the sunfish rolling down the stream now. One bass is trying to hold on there. And a few of these chub suckers in there too. We're not gonna keep those, although I hear some people like to eat them. There's still a few decent little bass in there. In and out. There's some more of those lily pad roots right there. Crazy, crazy how big these things get. They look like sticks in the water, like old driftwood. But it's there. lily pad roots. Oh, fine fish. That shows you just how skinny and pitiful the sunfish population is in here. Nothing for them to eat. And so their relative weight is really, really low. We ain't got all the water out of there yet, but we're getting close. They're rolling down the stream really good now. A few of them trying to fight it, but they'll end up against that screen over there pretty soon. So I may have misspoke earlier about how we're going to fill this thing up. Evidently there's a really big well over there, and so once it's appropriately dug out and everything, then they'll pump it full of water with the well, then add some lime to get the water just right before we do the stocking. Show you what we got here in the cooler so far. A lot of bluegill, the big bass are on the bottom there. We are getting some decent sized crappie or speckled perch as we like to call them down here. Most of these bass here are pretty skinny, just like that guy right there. Not a whole lot to him. All pretty low relative weights on them, which is indicative of not having enough prey or forage to eat. And um, that's why we're going to start all over. And once we get this thing redone, we'll end up with some nice fat bass in here. Some of the bluegill are pretty decent size. They're just not fat at all. They're skinny. Not much meat on them. You can tell by the color of this bottom here that there was a good bit of subsurface vegetation as well. And that probably had a lot to do with how shallow the pond was. Because right here where it's shallow, that's where we have a lot of this. We don't see as much of it over there where it's deep. So deepening this up a little bit so that we don't get as much light to the bottom there should help out with this a lot too. Here's some of the bigger fish right there. They're pretty long, not real fat. So they could uh, definitely have stood to eat a little bit more. All right, so that's going to do it for us today. It's almost getting dark out here so that's all the fish catching we have time for today we got pretty much all of them out of there anything of any substantial size please be sure to stay tuned for more videos coming on this whole pond rehabilitation project as we dig it out as we fill it with water get the water right and then start stocking it to hopefully eventually grow some really really big bass don't forget to hit that subscribe button Give us a big thumbs up, and we'll see you next time right here on the TLC Perfect Pond Channel.